Hello and welcome to the Travel Troll. We're at another church. You've just got to bear with us with the churches. Norfolk is full of churches. Good churches. Yeah. Um, right, we're in Attleborough. We don't know how you pronounce it. We don't know if it's Attleborough, Attleburg. How did you pronounce it? Attleborough. Attleborough. <laughs> it's one of the three. Um, the village Attleborough is famous for a couple of people. Now, not many people will have heard of this guy, unless you're a football fan in England. John Fashionu. John Fashionu, the England football player, played for Wimbledon, is from here. So is his brother Justin, who came out. I think he was the first gay footballer to come out. Um, and he were black. He must have gone through hell at the time, before he came out. Um, and somebody else who more people will have heard of, Formula One racing driver, one of the best of all time, Ayrton Senna. Ayrton Senna lived in Attleborough. And I'm presuming that's because you've got a Lotus Formula One place not far from here, and I reckon he must have stayed here whilst he must have been working for Lotus at some point. So, we're in Attleborough Church. It's actually called St Mary's Church. Let me show you around. Let us show you around. Do you know anything you'd like to say about the church to everybody? No. no. You might not do. Yet. Not, not yet. yet. Okay. So the first thing we noticed about the church is it's not very tall from the outside. There's no, like, big tower or anything. No. Did you notice that? Well, yeah. Have you any idea why? No. You haven't? I no. told you in car about yeah. ten minutes ago. <laughs> it used to have one of the biggest towers in the entire area, but uh, it fell down in the year 1700. The church yeah. is originally from 1100. It's a very old one. Why don't you remember things? I know. People keep saying that I'm picking on you all the time. It's my, my and I keep trying to tell you it. things to help you so that you don't look silly. And then I ask I you a question stuff. and just... you don't know the answer and you just look silly. And everyone picks on me because I'm the one making you look silly. But it's not my fault. It's your fault for being silly when you're looking silly. I just don't remember. Stop stuff. being silly. Oh, okay. <laughs> So the first thing you see as you're coming in is this very, very ancient grave. That's a beauty, I love that one. Now that is actually older than the building around you. Wow. It's older than this nave, so we don't know how old it is. We don't know who's inside it, but it looks like he was someone special. He liked to have a fight and is old. Have you ever heard the saying, the weakest go to the wall? Yeah. Well, no, I hadn't actually. No, no. neither had I, but apparently no. it's a saying. Yeah. Now, you've got these stone benches here around the nave of the church. Mm -hmm. Do you know what they're for? For the elderly and the sick when they come to church and. They it is. Sit it's, there. Yes, the elderly and the sick would sit here because you wouldn't have any more seats inside because these are from IKEA. They, they didn't have <laughs> IKEAs in the days this was yeah. built. How did you know that? Have you been reading something? Because she sounded like you were reading a script. <laughs> I'm clever. All oh, right. So we've got this wonderful pulpit here. Do you like that? Yeah, it's lovely. It's very nice, very nice. When do you think they built that? Oh, gosh. 1340. No, it's not old. It's not that old. Oh, ain't it? No, 1745. Oh, okay. Uh, sorry, 1845. They actually acquired it from a chapel in Westminster in London. Oh, wow, lovely. Mm. It's got some really nice cherubs on there. That was carved by someone called Grinling Gibbons. What a fantastic name. That was the name of the workshop, but that must have been someone's name. Grinling Gibbons. Grinling Gibbons. Yeah, very nice pulpit. I like that a lot. Now, you just said you've seen something which was on my list. Yeah, the Stations of the Cross. Where is it? <clears throat> All along there and along here. Ah, okay. Yeah, we were looking for something. It says, The Stations of the Cross were erected in 2009 by an artist called Helen. And she used techniques and motifs familiar to medieval artists to depict the journey of Jesus from Pilate's headquarters to his crucifixion and burial. The sequence of 14 stations begins in that corner of the church and finishes in another corner of the church. So they're here, look. This is why I didn't notice them, because it's art. I don't do art. They're on both sides of the church. Um, 
I'm guessing this is the start of the journey. That must be Jesus because he's got a gold head. Oh, here he is. Oh, no, this is the end of the journey. I don't know. It looks like they've all been mixed up to me. So St. Mary's is famous for something. It's this behind me. Look at this rude screen. Absolutely amazing. It's 52 feet long and it's seen as one of the best examples of a rood screen in the whole of England. It's also the only one which stretches from the very end to the very end, right across both aisles at each end. 52 foot long, it's amazing. Now you've got some saints and painted onto this. I'll just try and show you them behind me. You've got the first one there. I don't know if you can see this through this camera. You've got St. John the Baptist, that guy there, the Virgin Mary, uh, St. John is the third one, and then if you move over here, you've got St. Thomas Becket, there he is, the Holy Trinity, and St. Bartholomew at the very end there. Yes, I do know my saints. Are you impressed that I knew all that? Yeah. Yeah. I knew all the saints <laughs> along that them. root screen. How do you know? I just know everything. You can't see it very well, but up there is the remains of a mural which was painted in about the year 1500, just above the root screen there. There's a wooden chest here in the corner, dating from the 1600s with three locks on it which is said to be burglar proof. I'm not believing that, to be honest with you, in this day and age. It might have been burglar proof back in the day, not anymore. You want to lift it? That would have been inside. Oh, you want to look inside? It might have some treasure. It might have some treasure in it. Burglar proof. Well, it's burglar proof because you haven't lifted <laughs> the other one up. It's called an Alamy box. Oh, okay. Oh, and it's got all the fancy dress in there for us. No, I'm joking, it's not. It's important church stuff. We shouldn't have looked in there. It's called an alms box. Lovely. It is lovely. So this is a medieval font. Did you know that? Font? Right, yeah. Yeah, it's medieval. Very old, but it's only been in this church since 1975. And apparently you've got to look at the pictures of the faces because some of them are really quite comical. Um, I'm not seeing it yet. Can you see any funny faces? <laughs> There's got to be some funny faces somewhere. Is it, I don't know, is that one? Oh, let's have a look. I wouldn't, call them, I wouldn't call them comical, would you? No. Maybe they were once upon a time, they've all come off. Doesn't matter where I take her, she shows me up. She shows me up. That wasn't the alms <laughs> box, I was just showing you the big box over there. This is the alms box. 16th, 1600s, three locks to make it burglar proof, apparently. I just, I try to look clever, I try to read my notes, I'm trying to concentrate, I'm trying to get everything right. And you just come along and say, hey, what's this box over here? Is this anything special? It looks nice. It does look nice, yeah, but it's meant to be that one over there. I just look stupid now. Something else fascinating about this place, right. about this actual village, yeah. just outside this church, it is the first turnpike road in England was created here at the end of the 1600s. I don't know what a turnpike road that is, do you? Uh, Google turnpike road <laughs> in England, and this is where the very first one was. What is it? I don't know. It's oh, a road okay. which turns... <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> And the town was very heavily hit in World War I. 500 people from the village, it's only a tiny village, 500 men from the village went to war and 96 didn't return. That's a big casualty list for a tiny village like this. Everybody in the village will have known someone who died. I'm surprised there's no World War I plaques up about it, actually. Maybe there is, maybe I'm missing it. There's one last story I wanted to tell you about, but I don't have the story. I haven't got it. I don't, I, I've just got a tiny bit of the story. Either, I don't know, either that one or possibly the one at the other side is to commemorate somebody. 
big marble slab here. If it, I think it's marble. Um, there's a marble slab somewhere here, apparently. And it's to commemorate a guy. I'll just tell you the story very quickly. It's to commemorate Captain John Gibbs, who notoriously drove his carriage and four horses up and down the deepest part of the Devil's Ditch at Newmarket Heath for a £500 bet in the time of Charles II. I did read the proper story and it was really quite interesting, but I don't know what to tell you. If you're that interested, Google it, but uh, yeah. That's the end of this church. Where are you going? Where are you going? You need to give the church marks out of ten, please. Um, um, five. Five? Yeah. Well, I'm the travel troll, you're yeah. not. I'm going to have to give it a six. No. You'll be nitpicky over one point. No, I think it, it, it deserves a seven. When you walk in, it, you don't think it's anything special. Yeah. It doesn't look anything special. The beautiful glass stained windows, very mm. small. But there's a few things to see. You've got a, a medieval font. You've got, but this is why I'm going to give it a seven. Because it's got one of the best examples of a roof screen in the whole of England. That's a very rare roof screen. It's got to be worth a point. And the painting. The painting from the 1500s, I think I said it was, or 1600s. Um, that's history for you. That's history. It's got to deserve a bit of history. Six. Seven. <laughs> so that's the end. Thank you for joining me, the Travel Troll, on my own, giving it a seven. <laughs> bye. Bye-bye. Many thanks for watching, guys. Please don't forget to click like, subscribe, leave a comment and share the video. And be sure to check out my other channel, Deep Digger Dan, and my website, thetraveltroll.uk. You can also follow me on Facebook, on Twitter, and on Instagram. But most importantly, please do donate to the charity which we're supporting in this county. All links to everything I've just mentioned are all in the description below. Please come back tomorrow as we continue our adventure to try and make the biggest video library of the sites of the UK. Goodbye.